Good afternoon, everyone. So I'm from, so I'm Chang Chi from L61. I'm also YSF secretary. So today the topic I will be presenting is the science of smell. So how does our nose, how does our nose work, actually? Your sense of smell is basically like your sense of taste. It's part of your chemical and chemical sensory system, or the chemical sense. What is mean by chemical sense actually? It basically means you sense chemical. It's just when you smell and you sense chemical. So, when you imagine, when you breathe in, then you breathe in the other particles into your nose. And, the, and it will eventually reach to the nasal cavity, which is here. And in our nasal cavity, there's a region known as, known as the olfactory epithelium, which is here, as you can see here. So underneath of the olfactory epithelium, olfactory receptor cells can be found. This olfactory receptor cells is also being known as olfactory receptor neuron, which is which scientists normally call it or ORN. They, uh, they are special neurons which can detect smells. So, when other molecules stick, stick to the back of your nose, they get stuck to the olfactory mucosa. So, if, you wonder, if you're wondering what's olfactory mucosa, olfactory mucosa is actually the top region part of the nasal cavity, which is around here. The molecules bind with the receptors. This, I mean, the receptors, the receptor just now I told is that, yeah, the olfactory receptor neurons. These receptors transmit signal through the olfactory tract up to the brain for further processing. But then, no, not all the receptors are activated. What do I mean by that? It actually means, imagine, I mean, if you smell, then not all the receptors are being activated. It's actually, specific smell can trigger specific receptors. That's what makes it fun. So, for further information, this is why I've researched. So imagine, you're smelling a rose. Then the rose will contain R particle, O particle, S particle, and E particle. So when you smell it, the R O S E particle will trigger the R O S E receptor. So and then the R O S E receptor will be triggered and sends the send the information to the brain for further processing. So and then the brain will eventually combine the information and then determine whether what object it is. So you so in order to determine what the object you are smelling, you need a full information about the about the object. So what happens after that? On the upper side of the olfactory receptor neuron, the olfactory receptors carry an extension, the so-called exon. The, this exon travels from the nasal mucosa through the bone of the skull to the brain. It's like a passage. So the exon of all olfactory receptor neurons together form the olfactory nerve the first cranial nerve, which is here. I will show the bigger picture later, so you guys can see. So the exon reach a brain structure called the olfactory bulb. The olfactory bulb is above the nose, but already part of the brain. It's actually just on top of our nose. Within the olfactory bulb, exon, exons end in, end in some bone-like structure, the so-called glomeruli. The glomeruli is actually very small. It's actually very small. It's if I'm from what I've researched, it's actually like ten of a milli I mean one over ten of a millimeter only. So this is the bigger picture of it in case you guys can can't see I mean can't see clearly from the previous slide. So the other molecules get to here, the of a carry receptor neurons, which is here, and then and then it gets up to the uh, to the exome. Then the exome, I mean the exome combined together is called cranial, uh, first cranial nerve. So then it 
go up eventually and reach the olfactory bulb, which is the rumor really here. So what happens after that? A cell, which is neuron, in the olfactory bulb carries olfactory information from the bulb to the brain, which is olfactory cortex for processing. Later on, I will show the where is the where is the location of the olfactory cortex. So, both of these cells project into the olfactory tract, a bundle of fibers that carries olfactory information to the olfactory cortex. So, here is the olfactory tract as shown. It transfers the information from the olfactory bulb to the brain. So, this is an picture of the olfactory cortex, I mean the brain. The olfactory cortex is actually in the inside of the brain. I mean, and this thing is like a special instrument that the doctor used to uh, look at the inside. I mean, they like open it and look at the inside. So olfactory cortex is actually inside of the brain. This is a summary of what happens when you smell something. So first of all, the odorant, uh, the, you smell something, and the odorants, the odor, bind to receptors, which is here. And then the olfactory receptor cells are activated and send electric signal from here to on top. This is what you call axon. And then the signals are relayed in global relay. And then the signals are transmitted to higher region, higher region of the brain, which is olfactory cortex. So I'll be talking, I mean the next I'll be talking about is anos anosmia. So what does anosmia mean? Anosmia is actually the loss of energy, the loss of sense of smell, either total or partial. It may be caused by head injury, infection, or blockage of nose. So it basically means you can't smell something. So what causes anosmia? There's a lot of there's I mean, from my research, there's like few reasons, but I only take five from the internet. So first of all, is the mesopolyps. Mesopolyps is actually what I mean. What it means is actually a passage. I mean, a passage in your nose is actually being blocked, and you can't smell. And the second is expo exposure to toxic chemicals. It actually means if over exposure to toxic chemicals, it can lead to anosmia. And then radiation treatment of heat and neck cancer. So it's basically the same meaning. So when it over exposed to radiation treatment during head and neck cancer, then it will actually cause anosmia. And then all edge. From my research, um, the peak, I mean, like the peak time that you can smell when you, I mean, you can smell the most particle, the, smoke, the most smell, is actually during 30 years old to 60 years old. Then after 60 years old, it eventually getting decreased and yeah. And the last one I included is congenital anosmia. So what does it mean by congenital? Congenital is actually mean something that start from the birth. Get it? So when they are baby, then they already have these things. <coughs> So what is the treatment of it? Uh, I only include four treatments, which is the nasal washing or spray. Then you can eat steroid, steroid tablets or antihistamine. This is some kind of drugs, medical drugs, to cure these things. And then further, you can do operation to remove the blockage inside. So, uh, so sinus is actually the one I'm talking about just now. The passage that are being blocked uh, during the yeah, they are being blocked. <laughs> <laughs> so sinus is actually a small air filled cavities behind your cheekbones and your forehead, which is around here. So mucus produced by sinus usually drain into your nose through small channels, and it blocks. And that's the end of my talk. Thank you.